In tonight's reading, St. Paul sums up his argument by pointing out that you have more important things to do. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Tuesday, the 12th of September in the year of our Lord 2023. I'm glad you can join us as we end our day with God's Word and prayer. As we do, we are now up to Colossians 4. So again, we've been working our way through Paul's letter to the church in Colossae. And in this letter, he's addressing uh, the teaching of some false teachers who had followed behind him, trying to deceive the church in, Cor in Colossae, as well as others, insisting that there were, uh, well, that they needed to be circumcised, that there were certain foods that they needed to eat, and others they needed to avoid if they were going to be Christians. Um, there were certain festivals, certain special days that they had to observe if they were going to be Christians. And Paul simply dismantles their arguments, pointing out first that everything has already been given to them in Jesus Christ. And here he wraps up his argument uh, by pointing out that they have, they really have more important things to do more important things to be concerned with than things like which days to celebrate, what food to eat, and the like. So let's turn to, to our text. Colossians 4. Masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. Continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. At the same time, pray also for us, that God may open to us a door for the word to declare the mystery of Christ, on account of which I am in prison, that I may make it clear which is how I ought to speak. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. Tychicus will tell you about all my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts, and with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Aristarchus, my fellow prisoner, greets you, and Mark, the cousin of Barnabas, concerning whom you have received instructions, if he comes to you, welcome him. And Jesus, who, had, who is called Justice, these are the only men of the circumcision among my fellow workers for the kingdom of God, and they have been a comfort to me. Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ Jesus, greets you, always struggling on your behalf in his prayers, that you may stand mature and fully assured in all the will of God. For I bear him witness that he has worked hard for you and for those in Laodicea and Hierapolis. Luke, the beloved physician, greets you, as does Demas. Give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea, and to Nympha, and the church in her house. And when this letter has been read among you, have it also read in the church of the Laodiceans, and see that you also read the letter from Laodicea. And say to Archippus, see that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. I, Paul, write this greeting with my own hand. Remember my chains. Grace be with you. So I think this is probably one of the strongest arguments that Paul makes. Is simply the point that we have far more important things to be concerned with than insisting that people be circumcised, that insisting on certain foods either eaten or avoided, insisting on certain days be celebrated. 
we have far more important things to do, namely caring for those around us. You know, this is one of the big, uh, the one, I've, I think arguably the one most subtle but important points at the time of the Reformation. Uh, as Luther and the other reformers were pushing back on the idea that monks and nuns, by their vows of poverty and their vows of celibacy and these kind of things, uh, were earning for them and potentially for others some sort of extra credit before God, as if their lives were holier, were, uh, were more pleasing to God. The reformers pointed out what is really pleasing to God is that we love one another. We are not more holy if we lock ourselves away in a monastery. Arguably, we're less holy. Yes, we dedicate ourselves exclusively to, to thinking and meditating upon God, although along with that, there's plenty of work that needs to be done. But they pointed out that if you really want to honor God, if you really want to serve God, if you really want to live a holy life, then be a good Christian husband. Be a good Christian wife. Be a good Christian parent. Be a good Christian child. Walk in wisdom toward those around you, making the best use of the time. And that best use is not found in locking yourself away in a monastery. It's certainly not found in being preoccupied, obsessed with foods and days and these sorts of things. It is occupied with the task of receiving and showing the love of Christ. So, again, I think that's really one of the most powerful arguments against this, this foolishness. We, we, we do. We insist on finding something that we can seize on, something that we can take credit for, some, something we can do in order to feel like we have contributed to our salvation. The reality is that you have already been given everything in Jesus Christ. And the best use of the time that God gives you on this earth is simply to love him by loving the people around you. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. As always, thank you for joining us as we end our day with God's word and prayer. God willing, we will see you at this same time tomorrow. In the meantime, God's blessings on your night.